that's good we have a list of users and we also have their Twitter handle, Facebook handle, and GitHub handle. So if we edit one of these, we can see where we can enter in this information. However, not everyone wants to enter in their other social networking account information here. So we would like to hide this and give the option to where if they want to add it in, then they can just hit a checkbox and it'll display these for them to enter. So what we will look at today is a gem called Dependent Fields Rails, and this will allow us to hide fields based on other input actions. And since we have TurboLinks enabled on our account, we're also going to add in this jQuery TurboLinks, which will fix the bind event problems caused by TurboLinks. And if you look at the source, it's just a small file which gets included in your application. So to get started, go to your gem file and add in the jQuery TurboLinks and the dependent field Rails. Be sure to run the bundle command and then restart your Rails application. Another dependency of dependent field Rails is underscore JS. So you'll need to go to underscore JS.org, download the development version or the production version, which is just minified in gzipped. However, since the Rails asset pipeline will be compressed already, you could just download the development version. And you'll want to dump this into your vendor folder. So under vendor, assets, javascripts, the underscore JS, and then require it in your application.js. And then within your application javascripts, between the jQuery and jQuery UJS, add in the required jQuery turbo links. And then anywhere below that, you can add in the dependent fields. We'll then create a bind event here where we're adding in the dependent fields and calling dot bind on it. And then within our form, I've already added a extended profile boolean to our model here. And we're going to use this to, once it's checked, it'll drop down and add our three different social networking items. And then with the extended profile, I'm going to just, for display purposes, give it a explicit ID here so we can use this to reference with our jQuery dependent fields. I'll then wrap the social networking fields here with just a content tag div with a class of JS dependent fields. Then I'm passing in data attributes for checkbox ID of the user extended profile. So that's the same ID here. Notice that we do not have a pound in front of this. And then the checkbox value of true. So if this extended profile is checked, it should then display these three different social networking items. So going back to our application, we now see our extended profile checkbox. If we check it, it'll slide down and it'll display the different items. If you uncheck it, it'll then hide it. Leaving the page and going back to another page that already has it checked, it'll have them displayed. Uncheck it and it will hide them. And be sure to check out the documentation for dependent fields rails because there's different options for select items, checkboxes, and radio inputs. So the data attributes that you'll be passing it'll vary based on the different type of input. So here it's a data select ID, and then here it's a data checkbox ID, and then for the radio, it is the data radio name. So make sure that you are using the correct attributes here whenever you are using the different types of inputs. And one last thing to point out is if you are using a select or a radio input, you can add multiple values separating them by a pipe. So in your options value, have a pipe and it'll make sure that if either one of those are selected, then it'll display the fields. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching.